<laughs> One second, because I forgot to write down <laughs> the episode was out. Hold on, hold on. I know, I know. Don't judge me. It's fucking 6.45 in the morning. I'm trying to hurry get this motherfucker out of y'all. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I'm here to do for you for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Season 10, episode 7, called Rock the Bow. I just woke up, but I'm wearing my little festive uh, solo cup shirt. I literally just woke up, still got the damn dewy on. I mean, my fucking bed ain't made and shit. It is what it is. Then as soon as I swear, as soon as I'm done, I, I gotta get ready. <laughs> Long day. Um, so you have Sheree shopping for her basement. Uh, she makes mention of that it wasn't complete, still isn't complete. Uh, but she's trying to do like a theater, sauna, spa. She does that with Portia, uneventful. So we have Cynthia, Kenny, and Candy. So uh, Candy comes over to see Cynthia. She mentions that, uh, well, no. Candy comes over to see, yeah, see Cynthia. She mentions that Kenya's on her way. So she uh, greets Kenya, brings her in. Uh, they bring up the funeral and <laughs> ask her, like, how was it? She's like, it was a funeral, you know. But she explained what happened, what, you know, the motions. Even mentioned that Mark was there. And apparently, I guess Cynthia felt this was the opportune time, regardless of if there was time between topics. I'm pretty sure it was to bring up what happened on their trip and her feelings, conversations and whatnot. And, you know, her saying that, you know, I want to meet him and, you know, I haven't met him. These are my feelings. And she's like, well, there are reasons that y'all haven't met him now. She didn't say this, but the obvious is do y'all like. I really hope when the reunion come, Kenya's like, okay, let's look at this past season. All the cadence, all the bullshit, everything that y'all kept up, and y'all wonder why I have not brought my husband around. But she says that he is in New York primarily, is up there the majority of the time, so I'm going to see him. And then Cindy's like, oh, I was just up there. I could have had lunch, but I'm just like, all right, Cindy. I, I really do love me some Cindy. But I'm like, okay, you are doing the absolute fucking most. It's almost like she, the whole friend contract thing. Like, I'm like, all right, calm the fuck down. And, but she even said that, like, he's in New York. There was also the shit with Matt and the restraint on and whatnot. So, you know, him coming down here is not feasible. And if he has a business up there and she has business down here, is going to be difficult. And I don't blame her for protecting her relationship. And I'll and I'll piggyback on this. Hold you know, hold on, wait, let me let me find it so I can write it right down. Hold on. Hopefully I remember because I made a little note. Hopefully I fucking remember. Alright. Let me see. And Cynthia and Candy bring the whole prison bay tea to King, yeah, Kenya about Sheree, which again, y'all want to sit here. It's just like I got the shits in the vlogs, but he ain't even on the show yet. And y'all sit here going in on him, even when we saw this when y'all was in San Francisco, which y'all wonder why y'all ain't met Kenya's husband. Okay. So, Cynthia and Peter meet up. She's a 25% owner of the project they're working on, which I believe is going to be Bar 2, which is in uh, Atlanta. He says to her, well, you know, my businesses are popping in North Carolina. And then he then says in his confessionals that, uh, you know, he's about to, you know, murder them in ATL. She says, oh, well, you know, I've been following you on social media. I, I know what you've been doing. And, you know, still flirting. They're still on fire there. And he's like, well, I've been following you on social media, too. She then a little bit later in the conversation, she asked him for a larger percent. She was like, and how long are you going to be here? And he he alludes to the fact where it's like, oh, so you trying to sit here, you know, you know, jump on my pogo stick to get you a larger percentage. I'm like, those two or something else. But honestly, I think those two probably should film more only because it brings a lot out of her. And I mean, let's not sit here and pretend as if, you know, Peter wasn't sitting here helping her have a damn storyline. Let me see. Sheree talks to her kids. I don't give a fuck. Um, 
And I say I don't give a fuck only because they knew. And it seemed like they were just in like, okay, let us just get through this scene because we've already talked about it. So that's that. Uh, Candy, at one point, is spending time with, uh, I think her name is Kayla, Todd's daughter, uh, and Baby Ace. And uh, Baby Ace has learned how to swim, which it is nice. And, you know, she is still driving home with her, her not being a good, like, the best of uh, parents and whatnot. Talking about the difference between her raising Riley's single parent and then her raising Ace with a husband and whatnot, and her not being there. And we later see her do indoor skydiving with um, Riley, and you know them having a conversation of her wanting to do more things like this. Riley, you know her grown ass, grown for a bridge talking about some, you know where you're always busy, and Candace like, well, I, I sense some resentment. And she's like, well, we could just put it on the calendar. She's like, well, you're probably going to cancel. And here's the thing. I don't have kids. I got it. And I can see where Riley is because I was once there. Like I said, my parents divorced when I was two. So my mother took care of the entire household. My mom was gone the majority of the fucking day. So I think she would wake up at five, be in the bathroom first, getting ready. So she's out the door at seven to make it to work by nine. She gets off of work at five, obviously, and more often than not, she didn't come straight home. She either went and picked up groceries to come home and cook, or she might have had to stop and do something. Then she gets home, and for those of us who have jobs, when we get home, we sit down for a minute and just be like, oh. and then she would go and cook dinner, and we probably wouldn't get dinner on the table until maybe like 9, 10 o'clock at night, and then we're starting the day all over again. So yes, there is that resentment, and being younger, yeah, I'm like, okay, well, but being old, it's just like, I understand being an adult, like, you know, yeah, I feel a ways, but, you know, mama had to do what she had to do to make sure that, you know, everything was GTG. So, I think Candy is putting, I'm not saying putting 20 or 10, but investing too much, because the reality is, like I say, you are a parent, you doing the best you can, giving them the best life that they can. If she want to sit here and be in her feelings, oh, the fuck well, because I got it. Kids and family want time and not fucking material things, but you gotta live your best life for you too. And whatever. Yeah, I hope y'all get what I'm trying to say. We almost done, y'all. We almost done. So Cynthia, um, is getting ready on a boat trip with uh Will. The daily can't the daily family can't come, the leaks family can't come. I don't know why the fuck Portia didn't come. Or why she wasn't invited. Don't really. Pretty much Candy and Todd was the only ones that came. So Will sent her a uh, a car. She was fucking flabbergasted. All that good shit. They get there. Now Candy and Todd are walking up. And you know they are being shady. They they being messy. Talking about some uh you know she can't get with the first motherfucker that she see. I gotta remind myself to say something about this shit too. So then Candy said she did some investigating how he was on the Steve Harvey show for dating and, you know, was on another show. He was like, okay, well, the second show I wasn't on, somebody had propositioned me and I said, I may do it. And Candy then, Candy and Todd then bring up Peter and how they feel about Peter. And, you know, he's just kind of, he's just kind of sitting there just like, okay. It's like one of those ways, like, well, I'm here. He ain't, you know, the fuck we doing? And I love Candy. Y'all know I do. But my thing is this, Candy, I I, I got it. You sitting here trying to be there for your friend, but grilling him ain't the way. And, I mean, let's be honest. We, we don't sit here and, you know, clock, you know, his mouth when you got mouths on your, you know what, okay? We, we know we know you've been sleeping around. We know how you got Riley. Don't do that. Like, I think that right there was being too much. I got it. You sitting here being a friend, but with the research that you did, I think it probably would have been a little bit more acceptable for Candy to bring that to him. Well, I mean, to Cynthia and let her talk about it. And Candy holding as well. I mean, you know, Ty got grilled, so it's his turn. But the difference is Ty got grilled by your family. And it'd be a completely different thing if uh, Will gets grilled by Cynthia's family. Two totally different things. But again, and this is the point I'm going but again, y'all wonder why the fuck uh Kenya ain't brought her man around. Like, come on, man. 
we're good, whatever. So, at one point, uh, Porsche has a blind date. Don't give a fuck. Um, so, uh, they disperse. The girls talk, the men talk. And the whole, and the main thing is just, you know, take your time. And then, you know, Ken is like, hey, well, has he hit it? Because I know somebody, she was like, I ain't saying nobody ain't hit it. He just did the other motherfucker with it. And, you know, she he was just saying, like, she wants to take it slow because she would hate to rush things. And then, you know, they get intimate and, you know, things don't go right. He don't, you know, measure up. And then they get back together. She brings it up. And Candy kind of, I think Candy's more mad. Like, don't sit here and tell her what the fuck we was talking about because I guess she doesn't want to come off a certain way. But miss me with the bullshit. And then she raised me for her life coach. And she said, I told the kids, don't fucking care. Prison bay call, she out there, you know, <laughs> all that shit and whatnot. And, you know, he, you know, sitting here running game and whatnot. It is what it is. The only thing that, that I think of substance that came out of that is, you know, one, it seemed like he shielded her by, like, cutting contact because the feds was coming for him. Didn't want to get her wrapped up in it. But she said that he should be home by the end of the year, if not four more years. So that's all I got. <laughs> I know there was more. Hey, that's all I can give y'all right now because again, I gotta hurry up, do my little quick edit, throw this shit up, and I literally gotta get ready because I gotta meet up with somebody that just got here to kind of show them how to fucking get like maneuver from where we're at. Got a half day today, but there's a Christmas market. Even though I don't do Christmas, there's a Christmas market. Uh, this week, I'm going with a friend today, and like I said, I want to try to, you know, that glue vine, you know, get a little lit in the middle of the day and all that shit, and I do need to get a haircut, too, so that's all I got, you guys. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys on the uh, next video. Peace.